Hello. Welcome to the show. My name is Laura Saul. I'm the host for Education in Our Community. And today I am honored to have with us a uh, dual dynamic team from um, Strategic Squad. Their team, their company name is Strategic Squad. Our show today is Strategic Finances or Strategic Financial Planning. So I wanted to have them into our studio today because there are so many people being challenged with their finances, young as well as old, what they are planning to do when their parents become elderly. We are gonna have a, a discussion today about what you should and could be working on right now to plan for your future and what some of us need to be doing right now to deal with our elderly parents. So right now, welcome Nicole Middleton Thank and you. Dennis Middleton, a dynamic team from uh, Strategic Squad. Strategy so, Squad. <laughs> yeah. Strategy Squad. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. first of all, I wanted to find out from the two of you what exactly is a strategy squad and what is it that the two of you do? Mm -hmm. So we are a full service, independent wealth management company, wealth management firm. We focus on financial planning for both individuals and families uh, to help them be more secure with their uh, financial planning, as well as to try to grow their wealth. And um, we are unique because we are a family-run business. We benefit from two generations of, of diverse experience in financial services. And we really enjoy what we do in empowering families. Excellent. We also uh, provide uh, financial plans for those who want to uh, figure out what to do with their finances and how to prepare for things in the future. Um, we also have insurance products that people might need for their uh, uh, life insurance, uh, disability insurance, health insurance. So we're a full, full service financial firm. Wow, wow. Something I didn't say, you're a father and daughter team. We are. And this is wonderful. You know, we don't get to see that very often in our community. And both um, the fact that you're father and daughter and you are African American and you're dealing with finances. Mm -hmm. And so those are, you know, three great areas to, to think of. Um, yeah, I'm so proud of my daughter for having followed somewhat in my footsteps. <laughs> I am a certified public accountant. Um, but she has always been good with the numbers and has a wealth of experience in the financial area. So she's fallen in my footsteps somewhat uh, in that area, but we're great. It's great to working with Nicole, yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, and I didn't want to spend um, as much time talking about the two of you and your backgrounds and things because our show tends to go so fast and we might have to do a part two because I think your backgrounds are as important as what you do today. And so forgive me for not going into that because I think people seeing how real the two of you are uh, makes them listen a little more, okay? And the fact that you're both from this area, Berkeley? I'm from Berkeley. I went to high school right in this building. Okay. Berkeley High School. Okay. Uh, it's a nostalgic being here, and I'm glad to, to be back to, yes. to share what knowledge we have. Yeah. Some of that I learned right here in Berkeley. See, that's important. 
for people to know and understand that you're from this area. You know the changes that have occurred in this area, both um, as it relates to African Americans, but also as it relates to our financial success and failures from this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've seen the decline. Um, but once again, hopefully we'll be able to get you back to talk in more detail about that. Part of my motivation for having you come today was so our listening audience could really hear what you feel is important for people to start working on right now so that their finances, their financial stability can be in place when it comes to them getting older and dealing with loved ones who are already older. And so, Nicole, can you speak from a younger person's point of view about what it is someone can start working on right now so that they will be in a better position as they get older. Sure, uh, absolutely. I think the one thing that we, we as financial professionals know is the earlier that you start uh, with a solid financial plan and to be really mindful about the financial decisions that you're making uh, in terms of your saving, where you're saving, making sure that you know you really are keeping a budget, a weekly, monthly budget, and are finding ways to save in that budget, um, making sure that you are saving for retirement. There are lots of easy ways to save for retirement where you can just go online and open up uh, your IRA, you know, an IRA account. Um, if you're young and uh, relatively in a moderate to low tax bracket, Roth IRAs are probably the best um, option for you now so that you can take advantage of, of tax-free growth. Um, and also being mindful about how you're using debt. Um, I think those, those are really key areas for folks of younger generations, um, as well as, as learning how to invest. Um, and, and making sure that you are, are educating yourself or working with someone who can try to start teaching you about smart ways to invest your money. But if I'm someone working somewhere for $15 an hour, if I'm lucky, mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot of money to put aside or to, to save or invest with. I don't think I do. Is it possible that I can start working on things now? Yes, absolutely. Um, some uh, employers have 401k plans that have matching. So if you put in $15, the company might match you $15. They have, may have a percentage that they might match of uh, your compensation up to uh, 5% or something. So there are ways to save. It's amazing to me over the years how some of my clients have saved very small amounts of money and accumulated it into very large sums of money. I remember the years where individual retirement accounts, IRAs, were $2,000 contributions, the maximum that you can make. And some of my clients did, over year in and year out. So it doesn't seem like a lot of money. And if you divide that by 12, you know, then it's you know, only a couple of few hundred dollars, a hundred dollars or so a month. So people with small incomes can save and okay, should save because so those monies can turn out to be hundreds of thousands of dollars later in life. Okay. But now I'm older and approaching retirement age. Is it too late for me to start doing something with my money now that I'm much older? Absolutely not. And the key thing is to look at what opportunities you have. I've had clients that invested in a retirement account and kept it in money markets accounts for a year. So make sure you're getting a return on what money you do invest. 
There are different retirement plans that could be set up, particularly self-employed people uh, can set up uh, uh, defined contribution plans to contribute more than the, the normal maximums that are out there. Take advantage of the code, the Internal Revenue Code. There are ways that people are putting in substantial amounts of money away. Yeah. But you know, when I hear finances and when people start talking about money, I get scared, I get nervous, okay? Where can I go to learn more about financial investing and financial planning before I come to professionals like you? Because mm -hmm. how do I choose one over the other? Mm -hmm. How do I really use my money in a positive way so that I'm not spending all on it, all of it on the people that are supposed to be watching it for me? Sure. So um, one of one resource. So I'm a, I'm a member of the Financial Planning Association. It's a, an association of, of financial planners, um, national organization. They offer a, a, a great deal of free material, uh, free financial education material. There's financial education material offered through the government, through the U.S. government. You really all you have to do is is go to the internet and just Google. Um, financial education, financial planning. There's tons and tons of resources mm -hmm. out there. Um, but I think those, res and those resources can be very helpful to kind of get, get you started, get you thinking. But I think it also does help for you to sit down with a financial professional that is really going to be um, mindful about your unique situation because no two people have the exact same financial situation or, or, or need to be making the exact same financial decisions at the same time. So it's really helpful to have that conversation at least with a financial professional um, mm -hmm. to kind of help guide you on the things that you should start, be do should start doing or need to be thinking about before you make you know, any um, kind of drastic decision, I would, I would say. Now, Dennis, you've been in this field a long time and or related feel for quite a you while. You can tell by the hair though. <laughs> <you have one. laughs> yeah. And so can you give some examples of, uh, let's go with a negative example of how someone has just totally wasted away their money. And then we, I want to end with someone who really used their money in a smart way and where it benefited them. Yes, unfortunately there have been experiences I've had with uh, clients that did not listen, uh, did not pay attention. Uh, when you're young, you think you're never going to get old. You think you're, or you're going to make the money again. I had, I've had athletes, I've had uh, entertainers, um, actors that they're making $50,000 a week on a sitcom. They're also spending $50,000 a week and eventually the show gets canceled. They've done it, you know, in and out. Uh, we've advised them to put, you know, money to pay their taxes, to put money away in their savings, but they wanted to live a good life. So when the show was canceled, it wasn't picked up, or the basketball player who's seven seasons into the NBA making $5 million a year, having BMWs in five different cities, uh, apartments all over the, the place, not saving for the future. Mm -hmm. Seventh year has an injury uh, and doesn't play in the league again. So that's unfortunate, but it does happen. Just uh, on a smaller scale, there are people who borrow against their real estate uh, equity all the time. They use it as a piggy bank until the, to the point that it, um, when the, the real estate bubble hit um, seven or eight years ago, they lost their house. Those are unfortunate things, but they, they didn't listen to, uh, to people that trying to protect them against themselves, from themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of the negative things that have happened. Mm -hmm. um, the positive ones are that people did listen. Uh, the examples I mentioned of people putting money into their retirement, $2,000 a year. Uh, finding ways of converting traditional uh, IRAs into Roth IRAs. They've listened to me. 
-hmm. Now they have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting, if not more, uh, sitting in their retirement accounts. We have a current client that has listened to me over the years and uh, invested in her 401k, mm -hmm. um, took advantage of the company stock options, took advantage of the company matching. Uh, she's now at 66 years old and we're uh, developing a, a, a planned retirement. She's, uh, she's going to have an amazing retirement, uh, <laughs> just an amazing retirement. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's so much fun to work with someone who has listened over the years and now are, are ready to reap the benefits of, of that plan. And then we are working with other clients that do the same thing, to, to create wealth so they can enjoy their elder, mm -hmm. older years. Nice. That's really nice. Well, all of us have reached a, a place where we know of or either have loved ones who are older, mm -hmm. parents in their 80s, who have acquired a lot of property, a lot of stuff. Can you talk about what you would recommend that a family does in order to prepare for that parent or loved one who is about to transition? So for those that are, are older in their years and if they don't have an up-to-date estate plan is, is very, very important. And in order, to, in order to do that, they need to know what, again, what, what are the assets that they own and really give some thought about how they want to pass those assets along. Um, the second thing that they need to do is they need to have the legal documents in place once, you know, to, in order to follow their wishes when they're gone. And this can tend to be a typical, a, a difficult area for um, many of our, our, our elderly folks because there may be some family dynamics, um, some disagreements on, uh, you know, within the family. But it's very important for um, the, the elders themselves to really um, define what they want and how they want their assets to, to be, um, you know, where they want their assets to go. And then making, making sure that there are wills and trust documents set up uh, so that, uh, and particularly trust um, for those that have substantial property such as uh, those with substantial real estate property, for instance, those that live here in Berkeley, uh, that can be the biggest asset that they own. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that there is a trust that has been created, that they work with an attorney to set up the trust so that, those, that, that asset can pass along without having to go through the expense and the delay and the fees of, of probate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake is not to do anything. That's unfortunately what we do. We procrastinate. We say, well, I'll look at it next week. Next week turns into next month. Next month turns into two years. Two years turns into a tragedy happening, as we saw recently with the Northern California wildfires. Or the um, ghost ship place in Oakland that, that burned down with some um, horrific um, people, uh, lives being taken. Mm -hmm. Um, they may have thought, some of the people that uh, perished may have thought they had years. We all think we have years, mm -hmm. but do something today. Do something as soon as you can to, to create a plan. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you would suggest a family does? Write down, as Nikki mentioned, you know, make, uh, make a written plan of assets. Um, I personally um, have experience where there was fam land in the family we did not even know about. Um, you could be married to someone that uh, second marriage or first marriage where uh, they're the one sixteenth entrance in a property in Mississippi uh, that um, if nobody else knows about. The children don't know about it. The spouse doesn't know about it. Mm -hmm. So it's important to write down all of the information that you can about the assets that you have. Okay. And again, um, there are so many people who don't know about all that a person has. Are there places you can go to find out more, such as the unclaimed 
yeah. money mm -hmm. yeah. site. Are those good places or are they a scam? No, they're, they're, those are government-run uh, right. websites, uh, the, the unclaimed property for the state of California. There are, you'll be surprised the names that you'll find that uh, people have, and some of my clients have retrieved assets or retrieved bank accounts. There's a small bank account that they didn't touch for five years, and I guess it then gets transferred over. Uh, Everybody should check it once in a while. I'm like, I should check it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also it's, it's not being unafraid to talk, have the conversation within the family. I think that's something that we should encourage a lot more mm -hmm. is for, uh, as a family, for there to be much better communication mm -hmm. uh, about finances, for, not, for us to not be afraid to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, and also for the older generation to... Uh, be the, the mentors of their children and their grandchildren, help them start learning how to save. You know, maybe, maybe instead of the, if the employer is not available, if they're not working, um, maybe the parent can do some sort of small match into a savings account for um, the child just to keep, get that habit going. And then, you know, and then that, that habit, then the, the, the child um, sees how easy that is, and they continue, and they continue that, yeah. and the money compounds and grows. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, I think that there could be, and people can't be afraid. And if the conversations are too difficult to be had within the family, sometimes it helps to have a third party, independent third party, there mm -hmm. to help facilitate the conversation and just help alert the family to other things that they could be thinking about. Okay. Now, could a um, individual who is within a family that doesn't get along or doesn't communicate well, uh, what would you say an individual child or niece or nephew or sibling can do to start documenting property that they know about? Well, they can meet with the, their grandparent or their aunt and help them start writing it down. And the key is writing it down or typing it in to, to a program that, uh, and the day's uh, technology. But yeah, uh, but, but documenting. Documentation mm -hmm. is really important because once someone is incapacitated, it's, you really can't get information out of them. Mm -hmm. So it's good to do that while they still have capacity. Now what I'm hearing um, more and more people say is that my loved ones have so much stuff. That's why the 1-800 junk trucks that we see around town are so uh, huge now nationwide. They are just booming because so many people have so much stuff. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a family uh, that they can start doing now with all of that stuff? Well, that's, that just depends on the family, I think, because that's a lot of, it's a lot of work, time, energy. You know, yeah. there are places, there are places where you can auction your stuff out, um, yeah. things like that. But I think people, I think, it's helpful for other family members to see that and to, to take notice. Is all this stuff useful? You know, mm -hmm. is, it, is, it, is, it helping, is it really helping out your bottom line to have all these things? Because I think that's part of um, the, um, our American identity is that we have to accumulate all this stuff. But if you are accumulating and, and being a consumer, and you don't have a proper amount of, you don't have a proper emergency fund that you can tap into mm -hmm. should emergencies happen, then, then that becomes a problem. So, mm -hmm. but you know, as far as what you can do with these things, that's, that's probably not my area of expertise. <laughs> yeah. well, you have to prioritize too. You really have to prioritize where you're, where you're gonna spend your time because stuff isn't that, that valuable. Right. There's things that are piled in the garage. It's the garage that's valuable. The, the garage attached to the house is valuable. The land is valuable. Right. Uh, the, 
maximizing uh, and protecting that asset is, a, is the most valuable thing. Perhaps the other stuff is just in the way, but it doesn't, it's not the biggest priority in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the um, things that are going to, to, to be able to help transfer wealth to the next generation uh, or to maximize cash flow in retirement years uh, to the elderly person that needs that cash flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So thus far, I've heard this talk about living trust, families having wills, families communicating with one another and doing it now, right now. Um, is there something else that you feel is really important to get out there to the public about their finances, about getting started, about uh, communicating? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we haven't talked too much about insurance. And um, insurance is such a crucial part of uh, being financially secure because you need to you need to ensure the, the fact that if you're if you're working you should have some you should have some form of disability insurance in case you become disabled and can't and can't work anymore who's going to pay the you know who's going to pay the bills so and, the, and those benefits may be offered through work but maybe not but that's a, a very it's a very important thing that uh, those who are still in their working years really truly understand their um, benefits that are available at work Mm -hmm. What those cover, what are the what are the the stipulations that may make it hard for them, and then they may need to go outside and get additional private insurance for for those gaps, um, because gaps definitely exist within um, kind of group imp group insurance plans. Um, same thing with any type of any um, significant type of property that is significant to you. If it's your home, if you have um, jewelry at home that is worth a t you know a lot of money, but it's sitting in your home and you're and it's not properly insured within your home and homeowner's insurance policy, uh, and then life insurance. If you have dependents that are you know that you are taking care of and that are you need to provide for, what are they going to do? What are they going to do if you're mm -hmm. not if you're not around and if you don't have the proper amount of life insurance? then that could be catastrophic to um, the, those that, that you may care for that you might leave behind. So I think those are very important areas and those things need to be revisited on an annual basis. And what are you going to do when you're elderly and don't have a cash flow? Wow. Uh, you, do you have long-term care insurance? Uh, do you have a way to, to uh, produce cash flow when you don't have an income. Social security is not enough perhaps. Small retirements are not enough. Yeah. Don't be wary of people that are going to try and take advantage of the equity in your house. You have relatives, you have uh, strangers, you have friends. Uh, they see that your house is worth a lot of money with no debt. They may try to tap into it for themselves. Be wary, be careful. Well, you know, this topic, like I said, we can go on and on and on and just as we get going good, then the show is over. <laughs> I want to thank both of you for coming. Um, this is Nicole and Dennis Middleton from Strategy Squad. And I am Laura Saul from Education in Our Community. I want you to take this information and put it to some use. Look them up if you need to ask any additional questions and go forth and have a great day.